missed out on most of January, but as a gift from Chinese New Year's, I'm back. Right? Gongxi Fa Tai. So, um, basically there's been a lot happening. Um, I already started putting in my steps to getting my permit so I can get my driver's license, which I'm still excited for, so technically I'm still keeping up with my resolutions at the sacrifice of not making some videos. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of stuff kind of just happening. I've been running around lately, um, I'm training for my, uh, my next test. Uh, Shurufu is, like, really, uh, determined. Uh-huh, that's the best way to put it. Uh, in regards to me, uh, preparing for my, uh, my next exam. Um, which, you know, I'm partially excited for, but sometimes I just kind of feel like I want to be, like, overly prepared, you know what I mean? Like, wow, she should have passed her exam a long time ago kind of thing, and I always just feel like I haven't done enough, but that's just me just being ambitious. Um, I also got an update from uh, Asian, uh, Asian Mail, um, which is actually, they're going to sponsor me and send me some food and some snacks, so, like, I'm super pumped about that because I do not turn down food. Um, but yeah, they contacted me and asked me if I would give them, you know, my personal opinion on the food, and God knows I love food, so I'm never going to say no to that. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about doing that. Um, it's, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, for Chinese New Year's, um, I went out for dinner, uh, with a friend. Uh, it was a great time, and, you know, we had a lot of fun, and then today I just came over from headquarters uh, for Eagle Claw Kung Fu, and they always do, like, these awesome, like, fantastic performances with, you know, waking up the lion, and, you know, everyone does their forms, and it's just, it's a really amazing experience. So, um, a lot of people are sort of making fun of the fact, like, you know, like, this is, this is amazing, like, what's supposed to happen? And I'm like, just more goodness. Just period. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I tend to get a little more excited, um, I guess, for Chinese New Year's than I do for regular Western New Year's, even though I grew up celebrating Western New Year's. But once I saw the Chinese New Year's, I was like, these people know how to party. So like, for me, that's like a big thing. Um, I didn't get the chance to perform for uh, Chinese New Year's this year, uh, mostly because there are some friends hanging out with me. Um, fellas, y'all won't understand what I'm thinking about. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's been, a, it's been an interesting year so far. Um, I also got the chance, uh, last month because I got to do a collaboration with, it came from the radio! I did a collaboration with them to go to the Macabre Fair Film Festival. This was all the way deep out, like, in, like, Carajo land, like, Long Island kind of thing, like, enough for me to take a nap. Um, but it was a lot, it was a lot of fun actually going there. I was excited. My friend Mark Torres, uh, he invited me out there, uh, to do some hosting on the red carpet. And the thing about it is, it was such a fun and amazing time that I'm impressed that I did decent in regards to the interviews. Because let me explain how this all happened. So, I wake up, I meet up with my best friend, Ritten Rit Ralph. And we're going, we're getting ready for the event. You know, I'm over here, you know, trying to do my hair. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to add the clip here or if I'm just going to cut to it. I haven't decided. So I guess we'll see where this goes. However, I'm in the hair salon trying to, like, make sure I look pretty, you know, for the red carpet event. And his brother is actually driving us out to the event because, you know, some stuff happened. And we were like, oh, God, how are we going to get there? So his brother ends up driving us. So here's the thing, I went to sleep in the back seat of the car. And that was great, I got a nap, I got my beauty sleep, you know? Um, um, but however, uh, Ralph and his brother tend to look pretty alike, and when I say pretty alike, like there's a big one and there's a little one, if you're not paying attention, you won't realize which one you're talking to, especially when you're half asleep. So, um, I wake up uh, from the back seat of the car and it's like, hey, yo, Sean, we're here. So I hear Ralph's voice, and I'm mean, like, get a, <sighs> you know, like, you know, stuff that pretty girls do all the time. So I wake up, and I get out of the car, and I'm barely functioning. There's, like, snow on the ground. I'm looking with my dress with, like, the split all the way up to here, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm really glad I got three-inch heels on right now. Like, this is not, I am not touching the floor. This is fantastic. So 
I get out the car and I'm kind of just like, is this where I'm supposed to be? And I'm still dead asleep in my head. Like I'm just kind of just standing there in a gown like, this is what girls do. They stand in gowns in the middle of snow for no reason. They have no idea where they're located. That's how all horror movies started. Get it? Because it's the macabre fair film. All right. So the thing about it is I see Ralph's brother, but I, I it doesn't even register that that's his brother. I just see a vague figure, and I don't have my glasses on. So I'm like, yeah, that's him. So I'm just kind of like trailing behind him like... I guess I'll just follow him. Where are we going? So like, you know, I'm still out of it. And then in the vast distance, probably within three feet, um, I see Ralph. And then I realize like, that's the bit. Oh, I'm following the little one. Oh, okay. Okay. Brain starting to wake up now. And if it wasn't for Ralph being there, I would have never been able to probably do anything. Cause I get there and I walk inside. And I'm like, oh, that's right, you're hosting, you're doing the red carpet. You didn't read the cheat sheet. The cheat sheet is basically so you can refresh your memory on anything that you've seen. You know the names by heart, you don't insult anyone. You know, it's like meeting Angelina Jolie and you're like, shh. She was in Girl Inter what is Girl Interrupted? Okay, so don't, no, okay. That's exactly why you need the cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> uh, for more, well, for reasons more than one. So. Um, I shuffle through there and I see like this little boutique thing that had sweatshirts with every horror movie that I could possibly love. Um, and if they weren't horror, they were gothic. Like there was a sweatshirt that I didn't get the chance to buy that was like, we are the weirdos, mister. And I was like, I'm getting that. I don't care what I have to spend. I want that. I want that. And then in the middle of me thinking, I want it. Ralph walks over and he's like, okay, we got to get you back on that. I'm like, what? No, but I want to go shopping. Like, what the f fine. So I get all the way over there and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I'm going to have time to prepare. <laughs> In Hollywood, there's never time to prepare. So what ends up happening is that I'm given a cheat sheet. No one's in order. And my first couple of interviews were like a little too long. But not because I was doing a terrible job, but because we, me and the person I was interviewing was having such a grand time cracking up because I was just happy about the fact that I was in there celebrating horror movies. Like that's, I mean, I, that's, that's all I cared about. It was like horror, yes! Like, you know, that's, that's what I do. I'm an insomniac who stays up to four o'clock in the morning watching horror movies because to me, somehow I can find poetry in that. I said I was a weirdo. Don't act like you're surprised. So. Um, I get on the red carpet and then I realized interviewing people on the red carpet is a whole other ball game compared to doing like New York Comic Con. It is, it is not, why am I shutting? Uh, don't worry about that. Um, so it's not that scene from the craft, you know, where like I'm going bald, you know, no, too many horror films. All right. So the point is, it's not the same. With conventions, you're literally like, all right. I like this product. I am going to interview you about this product. Is it okay if I interview you? And then the other people are more or less kind of doing this little number where it's like, oh no, who's gonna, I don't wanna be in front of the camera. I didn't, you. And they just sacrifice someone to put in front of the camera with me. And that's primarily how the conventions work. And usually most people wanna know, what kind of questions are you gonna ask me? And they ask me this, like I prepared like, well. <laughs> I could tell you, but <laughs> why would I? Like, that's how they perceive it. And I don't know why people think I'm just going to give them some, like, absurd trick question, you know? Um, one, I think it's rude. And two, like, it just it just elongates the time of the, of the interview for no reason. So um, on the red carpet, you know, there's kind of preparation. And you know what? And if you mess up, that's okay. Because at the conventions, you can just go, okay, we're going to just do that one one more time. All right, let's go. Hi, I'm Sean Saul from Benton Apple TV here. We're here at New York Comic Con. Like, you know, that's easy to fix. You can't do that on the red carpet. Because here's what's happening. We got John Behebowitz. I'm making up names for the sake of it. He comes all the way over and I'm like, oh, John. I can't find his name. <laughs> Hi, this is Sean Saul in collaboration with It Came From The Radio with 
John, tell our viewers here what movie you're here for and what's your nomination. Like, that's how you have to do it. And once John is done, you're going to get, okay, you know, and if you're thinking in the back of your head, oh, man, I really screwed it up. That was a dumb question. You still have to think on the fly. So you got to be like, oh, well, thank you so much for that interview. Thanks for watching. And then after that, you can't tell John, can we try that one again? Because you know where John's going to go? John's going to go over here to go interview with Biffany, okay? So he can move on to the next interview. And then by the time you look at John and say goodbye, suddenly you look over, there's Tina. And you're like, holy crap, Tina. You can't even, you don't even have the time to process anything. It's just more or less of you just going straight from like, bye, John. To, oh, Tina. <laughs> We're here with Tina. Tina. Yeah. What movie you're here for and what's your nomination? Oh, you're a photographer. Photographer, quick, think of photography questions. Like, it just doesn't help. <laughs> like, if you can't think on the fly, be hosting is not your, is not your, is not your specialty. Um, I'm pretty decent on thinking on the fly. It's probably because I'm a smart ass. But, um, I did get the chance to ask a lot of people, like, what actually scares them. I don't mean, like, woo, go. None of that. I want to know what really scares the crap out of you. And only, um... Uh, that question only came across to me because I was thinking, what scares me the most? And I'm going to share with you guys. It scares me to death that my bills always show up on time. Every single time. I check my P.O. box, I'm like, could be a gift, could be a letter. Does someone write to me because they love me? Oh, look, it's Verizon. Oh, look, it's this bill. What? Credit card? <laughs> No letters from loved ones except for my bills. That's terrifying, okay? I'm just just putting it out there. So, I actually got the chance to interview Eugene Clark, which, by the way, oh my God, I was so embarrassed in the middle of the interview because he was the second interview when I got out of the car. I don't remember who I interviewed first, and I probably won't recognize it until I see the footage when I go, oh my God, you're an idiot. What did you do? However, Eugene Clark is the second one, right? So now, here's the thing. Eugene Clark is from George Romero's Land of the Dead. Now, I loved that movie. He was the leading zombie that was like, let's take him on, you know, without saying so. So I see him, and there's this weird instinctual fear and recognition of him, but I'm still trying to, like, figure out how to do interviews, and it's sad that I can be half asleep and still conduct interviews because that's my, my acting reflex. Like, we need you to do a scene. Now. Okay, but then my brain's not functioning, but apparently people will be like, you did a great job. That was creative. And I'm like, I wasn't thinking, but I'm not sure what that says. But um, Eugene Clark is standing right there, and this whole time in my head, I'm like, where do I know him from? Where do I know him from? And he was polite. He was very polite. He introduced himself, said what movie he was from. And then in the middle of the flipping interview, I kid you fucking not. It registered. Suddenly my brain started to wake up and then I started to realize, oh my god, it's the big oh my god, that's the zombie! Oh my Don't don't move. Don't you're gonna look stupid. You look it's too late, you look stupid because now he realizes that. <sighs> right, mm-hmm. So what scares you, Eugene? Because in the middle of the interview, I haven't put it out yet, where I actually you start to see the realization come across my face and I'm like Oh my god, it's you! I loved you! I loved you! I loved you! And I didn't know how to tell him, like, I'm so sorry that I look like such a douchebag, but I swear to god, I just woke up from the back seat of a car, literally. I just stumbled in here with my heels and my hair done, and everyone just thinks I was awake for 12 hours. Like, I haven't been. I was sleeping. I was knocked out. So, he leaves, and I'm thinking to myself, but I didn't get the chance to take a picture with him because I felt like such an ass. So I was like, I'm just going to leave that one alone. But Eugene, if you're watching, yes, I remember you. I recognize you. That's not even the biggie. I was just, I was really sleeping. I was in the backseat of that car. I don't even want to know how the first interview came out because they were staring at me like, my name is Bob. And I'm staring at them like, what kind of name is Bob? I've never heard such a name before. Just, just repeat it. Just repeat it. Like I was, I was really gone in the backseat of that car. I was out. So, um, later on, I did get the chance to interview the Eileen Dietz. If you're too young, just go ahead. I'll give you some time to Google her name. Just. If I gave you, could I give you guys a hint? Like if you're too young to realize who that is. Wait, wait. I don't know if I could do it. Just 
just pretend with me when I cut this scene. I hope that helped you out. If not, then ah, like that should probably help you out there. However, Eileen Dietz was there and she was so much fun to interview. And she really liked me and I was kind of like, oh my god. <laughs> the Exorcist? Oh my god, she loved me? She loves me, oh my god. And then I thought I could tell everyone, but not everyone I know loves horror films, so I'm not sure what that would say about me. I don't care. I just don't know what it says. But anyway, I got the chance to interview her, and, you know, doing the red carpet, it was intense, because I didn't realize how many interviews I did, because I mean it. When you're on the carpet, this is literally it. Right, oh my god, thank you so much, Eileen. Thank you. Oh, Eugene, hi, Eugene. We have... Okay. Are you, are you here for a nomination? No? Guest star, guest star, stupid, 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 and we're on, oh, <laughs> we're here, okay, bye Eugene, bye, and then just, you, Jeff, Jeffrey, we are here now with Jeffrey, like, it's just, uh, but anyways, it was a great time, regardless of the fact that I felt like such a moron, um, I also got to use my wildlife app to show people like me dancing at the end. The, the award ceremony was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. And I'm just so happy that I got the chance to go and I would love to go again next year or anytime that they're having it because I just need an excuse to be around a bunch of horror crazy people like myself. So, um, but yeah, it was so much fun. They had a live band there. I got everyone to dance. <laughs> Uh, there's a picture on my Instagram where you just see my foot and it obviously looks like I had just stomped my foot and it's like ah! Like that's exactly what I look like in the picture um, If you're looking for me on Instagram, uh, I'll make sure to put the link name over here um, But yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I got home really 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 late, but it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. I kid you not um, But yeah, that's what I've been up to and I've been trying to like edit the footage to make sure everything looks fabulous and fantastic and great And then when I thought I was gonna finish editing I realized today was Chinese New Year's at headquarters and I was like, oh Oh But anyways, um Hope you guys don't mind this update and I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm about to do a couple more episodes for you guys to prepare. <laughs> so enjoy! Thank you guys so much, and I do appreciate you watching and supporting me. Um, make sure you do check out the Macabre Fair Film Festival uh, interviews that I did. I'm actually going to be putting up more of them soon. And back to more episodes of Written Writ Ralph. Um, I don't think we have any other uh, big events coming up anytime soon just yet. But be sure to look out for us, and thank you so much because you've been bitten. Thank you! Hey, um, so I see you looking around over there like, oh god, what's the next video I'm gonna watch? It doesn't matter, just click on Bitten Apple TV and just subscribe and then you can just watch our next video. Thank you!